all the books. Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Fourth Monsters vlog for the Warmer for the Fasting Gaming System, created by Games Workshop, based in the UK. And welcome to book review number 86 of this vlog. Today I'm going to be reviewing a novella-esque type of story called Ghost Speak Not and a short story called Patience, both written by James Swallow. As a small spin-off series within the Horus Heresy main storyline, this continues from the Shields of Lies and Nemesis as we see our beloved return of Garo and other characters. We can begin to talk about the front cover for this novella and short story. Both share the same front cover, which is just the background from Wow of Faith put in the forefront. So now I'm not talk about that front cover. However, both short stories were republished in the anthology The Silent War. On this front cover we see the Sigilite revealing something, with Sigismund standing on one side and Severian on the other side, now adopting fully in the armor of the Knight Errants, just like that of Garrow in the previous review. On one hand I love it for its details and giving a face for three important characters, but on the other hand it's cartoonish in an uncanny value vibes. I would give it 8 out of 10 forks. Let's see what the stories are all about. When Nathaniel Garrow carried word of the Warmaster's treachery to Terra, he also brought with him 70 loyal sons of the 14th Legion. Distrusted by their kinsmen, they languished in seclusion on Luna, until now. Amandira Kendall, once a sister of silence but more recently in service of the Sigilite, gives Helic Galore of the Death Guard a new purpose and a new duty, one that will untimely see him reunited with his former battle captain on the field of war. So the story Ghost Speaks Not, we get the beloved return of Amandira Kendall, a former silent sister who has renounced her vows of tranquility in order to serve Malkador. Last time we saw her she was in a short story called The Voice, also written by James Swallow as a part of the Tales of Heresy anthology. This choice doesn't seem at ease with her former sisters as she travels to Luna to meet up with other cooped up death guard that survived the flight of the Eisenstein, a novel also written by James Swallow. Two of death guard in particular are chosen to go along on the mission. Their names are Helic Galore and Kida. There is a nice callback to Voyan, who seems to have perished since we last saw him. Now there are a few questions to rise from this. I find it strange that they haven't used their abilities of, of these individuals before this event, either on a suicide mission or fighting as knight errants. But it could be that they lack the Psyker gene, hence why they are denied. Or it could be just the fact that they have chosen not to go with the knight errant path, but I don't think that is the case, because otherwise they would have said so. Another thing that comes up casually in conversation is the planted husk which Sor Talgran left behind himself in the novella The Purge, written by Anthony Reynolds. I thought this would come up into play later on, but nope. It is dealt with off screen, but we do find out what he actually did. It was an attempt to sabotage and destroy the psionic levies within the city of Sight. It would apparently lead to another demonic incursion, which we unfortunately will not witness now, as it was dealt with off screen. I find it pretty lackluster as it is heavily set up in the purge only to be left as a nothing in a short story not even long enough to be considered a novella. It's a complete missed opportunity there only so they could have a cameo mention of the character. Further on in the story, this group of individuals would travel to a distant planet which has been sending out messages to enemies of the Emperor and these agents of the Sigilite are sent in to stop this. Apparently they were chosen because the Imperial Fist cannot walk silently, which I think is a perfectly reasonable explanation. The whole theme of the Imperial Fist is explored deeper in the Praetorian of Dorn novel, which I re will review later on. Anyway, so on the planet they come across the astropath they believe is to behind all this, only to find out he has an agonizer, which would probably cause him pain in order to work compliantly with the traitors. Towards the end, Kida sacrifices himself in order to let the others escape. It ends with the question, It is said an Astartes is equal to 100 men, I wonder how many it will take to kill me. While the others are on board the ship, Kendall is about to give the order of the highest authority, something Galore opposes. 
Most definitely because he, as he has first hand seen the effect and backsides of a, that weapon being used. Kendall orders an exterminatus to be performed on the planet, only the first of countless others that she, as a part of the Proto-Inquisition, will enact. So, what did I think about this novella-esque short story? Well, we get the return of Kendall and her progression in a character development, which I enjoy following. We also explore the two previous unknown survivors from the flight of the Eisenstein, who both get unique personalities to stand out on their own. The story is the weaker factor, as they're just rooting out traitors on a planet. Nothing we haven't seen a lot of before. So we give this story 5 out of 10 forks. We can continue with the short story called Patience. This takes a first person perspective of Helge Galore of the previous short story. The story takes place in the rubble of Nolik's first city within a fallen church. It's a church dedicated to the god emperor. Actually this scene is the cover for the Garrow Wow of Faith novella. Following behind are the troopers of the imperial army. The church is a remnant from that of the word bearers when they still worship the god emperor. or worship the Emperor as a god. Together with the Imperial Troopers is Galor, now working for Malkador. He has come to seek out Garo, who seems to be missing for a couple of days. He has been fighting demons which destroyed his helmet. Galor says that their duty on the planet is done, but Garo seems to think that there is something still there on the planet. Galor tells him that unlike Garo, the other survivors were not giving the blessing of Malkador at first, which is a criticism I think is strong to talk about. The title refers to them taking their time being patient and that is rewarded when the others find Garrow. It draws out the demon which is in current Haydn, which I also believe is a demon of corn. It ends there with, I believe, them fighting off the creature. So it's hard to place when the story takes place more than it takes place after Ashes of Fealty, the short audio drama, and the previous short story called Ghost Speaks Not. Me personally think this is a short story taking place right after Wow of Faith. So, what did I think about this short story? It's a very short story, I would have to admit, but the little we get from it is strong enough to further flesh out the characters and build upon them. I like it and I heavily recommend it. I will give it 6 out of 10 forks, and with that, I will conclude this other drama review. Thank you very much for watching this other drama review, and don't forget to rate and subscribe to my channel. Please give a thumbs up on my videos and also leave comments on things I'm doing good so I keep on doing them and leave negative critique of things I'm doing bad so you improve or remove the content entirely and also don't forget to share this with your friends if it could be interesting, entertaining or simply inspiring. And I'm also on Facebook these days, there's a link down in the description, check it out and see if you like it. I try and update more regularly there than I do here on YouTube, not by much but a little to make a difference. But with that said, thank you very much for watching this book review. For the Emperor! Bye!